I'm married for 18 years in a very stable marriage, alhamdulillah. If a sister can accept that, I'd be very much open to marrying the most educated and professionally dynamic woman. So any Muslim women, doctors or engineers or congresswomen out there who want to marry this guy, this guy is willing to be your Prince Charming and he has three spots available for three lucky ladies. Imam Zaid Shakir has a record of being featured by mainstream media as one of the most influential Imams in America. He had this post recently which I thought was very interesting. He says, Many Muslim men will pass over talented, educated women who are willing to put their careers and education on hold if need be, to commit to a family. As a result of a significant number of our sisters, despite their beauty, talent, maturity, and dynamism, are passed over for marriage in favor of an idealized, demure, real Muslim woman. The social consequences of this practice are extremely grave for our community. We must ask ourselves, to what extent does this practice conform to the prophetic model? Our Prophet وسلم, was surrounded by strong, assertive, and independent women. The comments to this post were hilarious and also depressing. I'll read you them, but first, what does Imam Zaid mean when he talks about strong, assertive, independent women? He says the Prophet وسلم, was surrounded by such women. One question is, what women does Imam Zaid Shakir surround himself with? Is it women like Linda Sarsour, the pro-abortion, pro-LGBT activist, feminist? Or is it women like Ilhan Omar, the turban hijab wearing feminist congresswoman who dances in gay pride parades with drag queens and votes for billions of dollars in unconditional aid to Israel and also introduces legislation into Congress that condemns the Islamic Sharia as barbaric? Are these the types of women that the Prophet وسلم, surrounded himself with? Why is Imam Zaid surrounded by such women? Not only does Imam Zaid associate with such women time and time again, he also praises them as champions of justice. Are these the role models that Imam Zaid wants for Muslim women? Are these the strong, assertive, independent women that Imam Zaid wants Muslim men to marry? And if Muslim men refuse to marry these types of women, are they violating the prophetic model? Also, this word independent, where in the Quran and Sunnah do we see this as a desirable trait in women? The Quran and Sunnah actually teach us the opposite, that women are dependent on men. Give me any example of a female figure mentioned in the Quran and she will also be mentioned in relationship with other men. Whether it is Maryam, whether it is the Queen of Sheba, whether it is the wives of the Anbiya, even evil women like the wife of Abu Lahab. And when we look at the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that any woman dies while her husband is pleased with her, she will enter Jannah. This shows a deep relationship of dependence between women and men. And when we look at how Allah describes the virtuous women in the Quran, never does he call them independent. In fact, he says that they are obedient, they are qanitat, they are modest they are shy. In fact, that's what demure means. If you look up the definition of demure, it means to be highly modest, to be shy. Look at the daughters of the Prophet Shu'ib one of whom married the Prophet Musa and look at how they are described as being excessively shy and demure in the Quran. Look at Surah Al-Qasas verse 25. Allah says, فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى إِسْتِحْيَا إِسْتِحْيَا means this kind of extreme level of modesty and shyness. But have we ever stopped to think that maybe independence is a bad thing? Of course, feminism wants women to be independent, but why? Because to be dependent on a man reduces a woman's freedom. And that's a bad thing, according to liberalism. To maximize her freedom, a woman must remain independent. But there are three huge trade-offs. 
First of all, if you delay marriage for the sake of career and education, you're limiting your pool of potential husbands. Whether you like it or not, women are more attractive to men as potential mates when the women are younger. This is just simple human biology, and it's not going to change no matter how many Facebook posts these imams write. The second trade-off is that if you are a career woman, you will have to dedicate a large portion of your time and attention away from your husband and children. Maybe you won't even have time for children. Is that a sacrifice that you want to make, especially if you don't really have to? Islam facilitates for women the option to be completely taken care of financially, whether that's provided by her husband, her father, her grandfather, her brothers, her uncles, etc. And even if she has no family, it is the responsibility of the Amir, the leader of the Islamic nation, to provide for her. This allows Muslim women to be completely dedicated to their husbands, their children, their family, without having to worry about making ends meet. It should strike us as totally bizarre why a Muslim woman would for forego serving her family in order to serve some employer? Is that really what's going to bring her happiness? Is that really what's going to give her fulfillment? But one of the biggest trade-offs is also one of the most subtle. The reality is that so much of marital happiness requires dependence. Dependence creates love. This is especially true for women. When you depend on someone and you need them and that person provides for you and cares for you, feelings of deep love naturally grow. This is a natural human instinct that men have, but women have it especially. This is why women are naturally attracted to strong men, high status men, wealthy men. They want a man who will literally and figuratively sweep them off their feet. A man who can be their Prince Charming, a man who can be their their knight in shining armor, their hero. Women naturally desire to be dependent on such men. And that feeling of dependence is key to generating deeper attraction, deeper love, and a deeper attachment. But if a woman is constantly trying to be independent and wants to get rid of this feeling of dependence on her man, when she gets married, that deeper attraction, that deeper love and attachment is not going to be there. And this this is exactly why we see such high divorce rates in modern feminist society. One of the main components of love and attachment is missing. Now, I get it. I understand. Obviously, for a woman to be in a position of dependence creates risks. What if your husband turns out to be an abusive jerk who constantly is violating your Islamic rights? What if your husband breaks your heart? Those things are possible, unfortunately. But life is full of risks. No risk, no reward. So sure, you can keep yourself safe and remain independent, but you'll have to pay these trade-offs. And ultimately, you won't be able to experience this deep type of love and marital bliss that can only come through dependence. Overall, you have to have tawakkul in Allah and trust in the system that he has legislated for all of us. Now let's look at the comments to Imam Zaid's post. I don't count myself among such men. I'm very interested in marrying a well-educated, practicing Muslim woman. Whoa, this guy's a feminist. The main thing to be considered for myself is that she is interested in polygyny. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> maybe not. Because I'm married for 18 years in a very stable marriage, alhamdulillah. If a sister can accept that, I'd be very much open to marrying the most educated and professionally dynamic woman. So any Muslim women, doctors or engineers engineers or congresswomen out there who want to marry this guy. This guy is willing to be your Prince Charming and he has three spots available for three lucky ladies. I mean, this brings up a great point though. Are there strong, independent women who are willing to be second wives or third wives or fourth wives? Why not? Especially if you're concerned about the prophetic model or are these women too insecure? Men are insecure if they don't marry strong, independent women, but women are not insecure if they refuse to be second or third or fourth wives. Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ask his wife Khadija to put her career on hold when he married her? 
date her? I don't think so. Then why are you preaching that Muslim men should expect women to put theirs on hold? Most women who have careers still prioritize their children even while working. It's very disrespectful to assume women can't balance career and home simultaneously. My mother did. Uh oh. Imam Zaid bends over backwards to praise all these strong, independent queens, but they're still not happy with him. What's funny is that Imam Zaid in the post says that there are all these women who are willing to put their education on hold, their careers on hold, they're very successful, but they are going to put that all aside just so that they can get married. But ironically, most of the comments from women <laughs> are saying that, no, we're not gonna put our career and education on hold, how dare you? So I guess we have to address this. Khadija was a Fortune 500 CEO who had a career and, and this is the go-to example of all these feminists. The thing is that Khadija radiallahu anha, she inherited most of her wealth from previous marriages. And when we look at wealthy women, they have existed throughout traditional Muslim society, but this wealth was in the form of property or other investments. And so it was not like they're sitting in an office working for 40 or 50 hours a week. They would have these assets and earn money from the assets, but they weren't necessarily managing it hands-on. They would have other male family members, for example, uh, taking care of those kinds of things. I actually have an example in my own family. My grandmother was quite wealthy. She owned acres of farmland and she had male relatives who were managing it for her and, and she would get the profit from that land. But she was also raising eight children and she was cooking, she was cleaning, she was child rearing from morning until night. So that's the reality of these wealthy Muslim women like Khadija, including Khadija radiallahu anha, who was raising children was cooking for the Prophet وسلم, and taking care of these kinds of domestic affairs. So let's not project this Fortune 500 CEO model or this typical office job career woman model onto the companions and the wives of the Prophet my wife is college educated, yet is demure and supportive of my leadership of the family home and unit. That doesn't mean she's weak. I have seen her roar like a lion defending her children and property. However, she was and never will be a career woman. The reality is that strong and independent is often synonymous with women who have imbibed feminism, are rebellious toward their fathers long before they have husbands, and confuse argumentation for strength. Most men will take demure over this every day and twice on Sundays. Who is this misogynist incel? Stop mansplaining. I bet his wife is being abused. Career woman. We don't like you preferring to marry demure Muslim women over us. Muslim men. Don't care. Mind your business. I have the freedom to choose. Career woman says, how dare you? You must change your spousal preference based upon my choice to prioritize my career. The Muslim man says, nope. The career woman says, you are so wrong. How dare you not acknowledge that you're to blame for my choice regarding delaying marriage? I mean, just imagine women being responsible for their own choices. Only men have to face the consequences of their own choices. If you want to be a jobless bum and watch Star Wars and play video games in your mom's basement all day, sure, you can do that, but that comes with consequences. You're not going to be a very attractive potential husband. But are we going to see Imam Zaid lecturing Muslim women, hey, 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 stop looking at whether a man has a job, whether he is making money. No, marry the jobless bums. There's an epidemic of jobless bums playing video games in their mom's basement and they need wives too. You women need to step up and marry them. End this culture of creating strong, educated, university graduated women and the social issues will end. There's no reason to send daughters to university where they'll lose their haya and adopt feminist traits. A woman's beauty lies in simplicity and not talent, dynamism and everything else. Another crazy, misogynist, ach right, wallah bro incel. Doesn't he know that if your daughter doesn't get a college degree in psychology, she's going to end up being homeless and starving on the streets? Wake up! Great point, Imam Zaid. At the same time, we should emphasize the nurturing and emotional support men could give as stay-at-home husbands and fathers. Men are not ATM machines and bodyguards. We are vulnerable heart-centered and caring as well, and can make great supportive parents and partners. So then this guy responds, bro, you're known as the number one simp imam in the US. 
And then he responds, rather be known as the number one simp imam than the number one misogynistic imam in the world. Ooh, sick burn, bro. Sadly, Muslim women and her parents are looking for a Muslim man that has money. Cha-ching. They are looking for a doctor, engineer, lawyer, and maybe a pharmacist. The rest of us men are told to go back home to get a wife from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Jordan, Syria, etc. I've been told by three imams here in the Bay Area and Valley that this is a huge issue. Yeah, why aren't these amazing, talented women with PhDs or these high paying careers? Why aren't they marrying the cashiers? Why aren't they marrying the parking attendants? Or again, the gamers living in the basements? Stop being insecure, ladies. Salam, Sheikh. Can you share why you think this is the issue? Is it because of certain cultures or certain narratives of Islam that have been taught and recycled by and to men? What's the root of this problem? This is something women have been talking about for a very long time. So again, men are the problem. Men are to blame for this situation. Women could never be the problem. But I mean, joking aside, uh, a big part of the problem is because of men, specifically fathers who are pushing their daughters to prioritize education, pushing their daughters to prioritize career over marriage. So that is, you know, a lot of the blame lies with men. Where are these men finding these women who actually want to get married? <laughs> Miskeen. You should marry Western women because alhamdulillah, they're strong, assertive, and independent. The sunnah is learned in the West. Finally, someone is talking sense. Some of these sisters are being passed up, not because they are respectfully strong and assertive, they're being passed over for being disrespectful or egotistically overbearing. Uh, excuse me, incel? Keep sucking up to the white man. Ooh, he's making it racial, spicy. Thanks for speaking on our behalf, but I also think some women today have realized most men are really far beyond help, much less anything close to the Prophet ﷺ, and have made the decision to not get married or have children. And they are very happy with that. You go girl, dumb bimbo Barbies for insecure misogynistic men and strong intelligent women for strong intelligent men. Preach, slay. Crisis of manhood. Most of them are childish wimps. I think the word you're looking for actually is incel. Unfortunately, there's a wave of feminism that is destroying the iman of many of our brothers and sisters in the West and unfortunately throughout the world. Also, marriages are being destroyed because of these kinds of feminist principles and, and ideals about independence or whatever else. This is a huge harm to the ummah. And we have to look at some of the causes of this harm. Are things like this post, are the teachings of imams when they adopt feminist ideals and incorporate it into their Islamic teaching. They're seen as role models, they're seen as sources of Islamic guidance when they endorse feminist values in what they preach and what they teach, this has a huge effect. And the really sad thing about Imam Zaid is that not only is he uh, posting things like this, he's backing it up with actions where he's associating with these feminists and uh, Allah knows who else. So I advise myself and other imams and teachers of Islam, don't mix Islamic teachings with these kinds of feminist ideas. The results have been disastrous. If you'd like more information about Islamic marriage and gender roles, check out muslimskeptic.com. We have dozens of in-depth articles about these topics. Also, if you want more structured learning, check out Alesta Institute, where we offer on-demand courses on feminism, marriage, and much more.